Well, basically, each year we start with the, the same baseline mix, and we deviate from that. We, we try to, um, what we try to do is maximize our strength to weight ratio. We need um, a really low weight, lower than the, de lower than the density of water, um, but we need to keep a, maintain a high compression, compression strength. Today we will be uh, making mixes which we have prepared ahead of time. Um, we've batched out all of the ingredients, so all we do today is add the water. So basically we use a shale and a granite and some other um, traditional aggregates that are really strong. Uh, they're all mixed by hand. It's a lot easier because we can do smaller batches and instead of using a large mixer where some of it will begin to cure before we get it placed, we do anywhere from 10 to 15 batches. So they're all mixed by hand. It's a fairly dry mix. So when we're putting it on, we place it by hand. Most concrete you can pour. This concrete we figure it's easier to place by hand because we can work it into the shape of the mold. So this is our female mold for a concrete canoe. We have our first layer of concrete in almost. Um, it is a quarter of an inch thick. We use toothpicks that have marks on them to kind of check the thickness as we place it by hand. As you can see, they each grab about a fairly decent sized ball of concrete and place it little pieces at a time all the way up from starting kind of at the bottom of the boat and then they work their way up the sides. In between the layers, we do use reinforcement. This year we're using a carbon fiber mesh reinforcement in between the first and second layer, a carbon fiber toe in between the second and third layer. That will actually be pre-tensioned, uh, so when we are done placing, we can cut it once the concrete is cured. And it will actually put the boat in compression, which will add strength. And then we take it to competition and race it and hope it floats like an actual boat. <laughs> Uh, competition is actually made up in this region of about 12 or 13 schools depending on who competes this year. There's five races. Um, you have to do a two-man race, a two-woman race, a three-man endurance race, a three-woman endurance race, and then a co-ed, two guys, two girls. I mean, you're judged based on aesthetics and final product, which is kind of your boat in general, how it looks. Uh, does it pass the swamp test, meaning is it actually less dense than water? Does it float on its own? Uh, you're also judged on a presentation that you give, so generally the captains will give a presentation to a panel of judges. Uh, you have a design paper that you have to write justifying what you did and why you did it. Uh, an engineer's notebook which kind of chronicles the building process, uh, construction photos, samples of reinforcement to show what went in the boat. And of course the races which are the fun part, uh, those are actually the largest single portion of the score. Competitions are, you know, it's, it's one of the highlights of, of the years for, for us in, in our engineering curriculum. You know, it's, it, you know, working on the project really breaks up the monotony of it sometimes and being able to do these competitions and compete against these other schools and, you know, see what they come up with and it's just really fun to just go down as a group and, you know, enjoy the weekend and, and compete. I definitely have to say that the most important part of this process is learning the teamwork aspect of it because you're never really going to use concrete to make a boat, but you learn how to work well together as a team and solve problems, which is really important in engineering. Great way of learning how to manage people. Since I am in charge and they're all students who have classes and jobs and other stuff to do, trying to get everyone together to be a team and get everything done is really good learning how to be a leader. Um, and just how to communicate with people. So I think that's a very good skill. The leadership, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely been a helpful tool for me to be associated with this in terms of being a leader on the team because it gives me those responsibilities and it really, it really sets a base for you in terms of uh, leading a team and heading up a project. Projects like this have really helped kind of learn beyond class. Um, I was actually doing this before I took concrete classes, so I was a little bit ahead. I saw how it all behaved and the classes have definitely helped me in return, learning how to test concrete, mix concrete, um, design stuff with AutoCAD and other programs to help for the whole design. It definitely breaks up the entire studying process. It gives you something to do and something to look forward to than just reading and writing and doing your homework all the time. So I don't think anyone, many people can say they've raced in a, concrete, in a concrete boat before, and especially one that they designed and made. So that's, that's kind of one of the fun things, you'd be able to tell people that you're a part of something like this, it's so unique, you know, and so different. My name's Megan, I'm a freshman at Colorado State. 
and I got involved with Concrete Canoe because I wanted to do something hands-on during my semester and since we don't get to do a lot like in the lecture classes but read the books this was a lot of fun for me. After every year the freshmen always say that was so much fun after the competition and you know they always want to come back next year. This year um, all of our upperclassmen are all graduating so it's going to be me and a bunch of other freshmen. We're going to be trying our best but we're still going to be doing it because we had a lot of fun this year. <laughs> and even if you come out you know, come out first or last, you're still going to have fun, even if your boat breaks. And that's the beauty of these, these competitions is you don't have to win. It's just it's the experience that you, that you draw from it. You know, winning, winning the competition isn't going to get you a job. But being able to take the stuff you learn from it, you know, it, it might. And then also being able to draw those memories and, you know, being able to look back and say, yeah, I really enjoyed my time here at CSU because I was a part of this thing. I made some great friends and you know, great, made some great connections and learned a lot about not necessarily engineering but about people and t the team aspect of things is really enjoyable and really you know it's one of my better experiences here at CSU that I'll that I'll take